All right, welcome again, Wildcats. So today we're looking at Thursday, April 20th, graphing polynomials day three. And that's going to be on page 74. And then there won't be a video from Friday. I'm just going to tell you in this video that on Friday, April 21st, you'll have quiz 11. So if you would, pause the video and update your table of contents. All right, now your table of contents. Let's take a look at our examples. Now, example one I'm going to do in class, okay? Example number two I'm going to do in the video, and I'll do it again in class if I need to or if you ask me to, okay? All right, example two. All right, so we see the degree is four, so it's quartic. The leading coefficient is negative one. The number of turns is one less than the degree, so that's three. It's an even. Okay, y-intercept is the constant, which we don't know yet because we need to move everything to the left side. So we're going to add 5x cubed to both sides to so get negative x to the fourth, negative 1x to the fourth, plus 5x cubed minus 6x squared equal to 0. Okay, so the y-intercept is the constant, which in this case is 0, so the y-intercept is 0, 0. Okay, so now let's identify the zeros. Now, because we know in day three we've mixed up day one and day two, some of them are factorable, some are not. So let's we're going to start on every example to try to factor. So it looks like we can factor negative 1x squared from all the terms. So when we do that, we're left with x squared minus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. Okay? So we're just going to... Worry about the negative 1x squared in a, in a few seconds. And we know it's x squared, so two terms equal to 0. We know x and x make x squared. Now we need to find all the factors of 6. Okay, so that's negative 1 times negative 6, negative 2 times negative 3, negative 3 times negative 2. Okay, so we look for the combination that makes negative 5. That's negative 2 and negative 3. So that's x minus 2, x minus 3. So now we set them each equal to 0. So negative 1, x squared, equal to 0. x minus 2 equal to 0. And x minus 3 equal to 0. All right, so we divide both sides by negative 1. So you get x squared equal to 0. Take the square root of both sides. Remember, plus or minus. So we get x equals positive zero and x equals negative zero, so we get x equals zero multiplicity of two. Okay? All right, so then we add two to both sides, we get x equals two. And then we add three to both sides, we get x equals three. All right, now for the sketch of the graph, we know that since it's a negative quartic, that it's going down here and here. So we know that it's going down. Okay. Now, because it's multiplicity, it touches and turns. Okay. It doesn't go through the point. Okay. Then we have to turn up. Okay. To go through two. And then turn down to go through three. So we double check our turns. We have one, two, three turns. So there's your sketch of your graph. All right. So now our end behavior. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And when x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. All right, so if you would finish up example number two. All right, so now let's look at now example three. I'm going to go over in class. And example four, I'm going to go over in the video, and then I'm going to ask you in class if you want me to go over it again. Okay. All right, so first things first is we want to see if it's factorable. Okay. Now I see four terms, so I'm going to see if it's factorable by grouping. So it looks like in the first two terms, I can factor out an x squared, which leaves me x plus 1. 
And here it looks like I can factor out negative 2, so that's negative 2x plus 4. Since these terms aren't the same, it is not factorable. Okay, so since it's not factorable, we need to go through and do P divided by Q. Okay, and before we do that, let's just go through here and let's look at the degree. So the degree name is to the third power, so that's cubic. The leading coefficient is a positive 1. The number of terms is 1 less than the degree, so that's 2 terms. It's odd. Okay, the y intercept is the constant, which is negative 8, so 0, negative 8. Okay, now we're at a point where we can continue with identifying the zeros. Okay, so P is the factors of the constant, which is, so the constant's negative 8, and Q is factors of the leading coefficient, which is 1. Okay, so the factors of the constant are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. And the factors of the thing coefficient are plus or minus 1. Since it's just plus or minus 1, we know our factors are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. Okay, so now we go into synthetic division. Okay, so, and we're going to start with 1. Now, as I showed you in earlier videos, that we're going to actually going to do synthetic division through a table so we can do multiple synthetic divisions, okay? So we know that here this is 1, 1, negative 2, negative 8. So you bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 2 and 2 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. So you get negative 8. Now, if you get a 0 here, then we have found the 0 or our rational root. But since it's not, we continue on. And so I'm just going to do plus or minus, so I'm going to try negative 1. Okay? So then negative 1. So again, I'm going to erase the previous synthetic division work. Okay? So then I bring down to 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 1 and negative 1 is 0. Negative 1 and 0 is 0. Negative 2 Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, which is negative 6, not 0. So negative 1 is not a rational root or 0, so we're going to try and move on. Okay, so I'm going to erase that, and let's try positive 2. Okay, so bring down to 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 and 2 combined is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 2 and 6 combined is 4. 2 and 4 is positive 8 gives us 0, which means 2 is a 0 or rational root. Okay. Now we know, since it's cubic, that there's 3. So we have one of them, we need two more. Okay, now we know that we started here with x cubed, so this is x squared. So we have 1x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0. Now, this is not factorable because the combinations of 4 are 1 and 4, 2 and... So 1 and 4, 2 and 2, and 4 and 1. Okay? None of these combinations will give you a positive 3. So we're going to need to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so the quadratic formula says that x equals negative b, so that's negative 3, plus or minus 
the square root of b squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 1 times 4. Divided by 2 times 1, which is just 2. All right. So when we look at this, we get x equals, and actually I'll put the x equals here. x equals, well, negative 3 plus the square root of 9 minus 4 times 1 times 4 is a negative 7, which the square root of a negative number is imaginary, so that's square root of 7i. And that's divided by 2. Okay. Then we do negative 3. I almost forgot x equals. x equals negative 3 minus still the square root of 7i divided by 2. Okay, so at this point we know that it's going to end going up, but the concern is we don't know because of the imaginary number where it turns, okay? Now we know it turns below the x-axis, okay? But we don't know where that turn is. So in this case, when in doubt, graph it out. So graph this to verify where it turns, okay? So with that, that gets you through a couple examples. If you can, try the other examples on your own. If not, don't worry. We're going to go over those examples and the ones I did in the video if we need to again on Thursday. So with that, have an imaginary wildcat day.